What is going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of the Star Wars Exchange. We're back to review Jedi Survivor. How good is it to be not talking about The Mandalorian Season 3? So anyway, I'm here today with my buddy and co-host, Mike. How you going, mate? Hey, hey, hey. It is cool to be talking about something else. And I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm in the Star Wars mood right now. It's mm. uh, I've been re-watching Rebels. I was playing Survivor, but up to that point i was playing fallen order like my mm. favorite star wars game ever and then went to go see return of the jedi in theaters for its 40th anniversary how many people can say that i know ari can't but how are you doing ari <laughs> i'm doing good yeah i i wish they showed it uh in any cinema here in, in uh, melbourne australia but yeah nothing i'm doing good i'm a little bit sick hopefully you guys can't hear it in your voice uh nothing major just a small cold as we are heading into winter here in oz but uh you know my nick's got to win today so i'm very happy about that going to see uh what am i going to see guardians of the galaxy 3 tonight which i'm excited about so that'll be fun um yeah i know i know i wasn't on the last episode where you and our good friend aiden darth deacon they uh you guys reviewed battle scars and and led us into survivor and now we're here on the other end of that we've we've played it so if you haven't checked out that video and, and want to know about battle scars go check that out um but yeah jedi survivor man let's talk about it this was uh talk talk just Give your overall thoughts, but talk about your experience with the game because I know you had a, uh, I don't know, unique experience. I guess you went from <laughs> watching me play it to you know on right. YouTube and then borrowing yeah. a PS Five. So just tell us, uh, oh. how, how do you go? How do you tell us about your experience and then tell us your overall thoughts on the game? I really wish you didn't set me up like that because I would have been like, yeah. So I got to, you know, I got to go to EA headquarters and and they let me play <laughs> the game ahead of time. No, no, maybe one day, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I had a unique experience because I didn't, I don't have a PS5. So, um, and I didn't get one in time and all my funding right now, money wise is going towards, um, upcoming trips. And, and I was gonna, I even took out a credit card, a new credit card with a new company, but then was like, Hmm, if I, by the time I order this and get this, it's just, I don't even have the credit card yet. So I still wouldn't have played. And for me, it, it was such a cool experience to get to watch Ari to play. And we had like this whole operation just for us to get to experience <laughs> it together. And it, like it would lag out so much, but Ari was just, and I even got to play it uh, via PlayStation share yeah. play or something. Yeah. Yeah. Through for about Ari's, five seconds. It was great. For five seconds. <laughs> those five seconds are everything. So yeah. that was great. Um, but you know, this, I mean, and by the way, like shout out Michelle Ahsoka Xtano, who mm. you will be hearing on the pod very soon. Oh, very soon. She yeah. lend me her PS5 and I still have it. And I bought the game and everything. So it happened all because of her. So shout out Michelle. Could I have not? I, I really can't thank her enough. Shout um, out Michelle. I, I can't, I can't thank her enough. That, that was just so sweet of her and everything. And, and yeah, she's here in Chicago. So I got to go up to her house and uh, where she lives and, and she gave me the PS five. It was, it was a shady, shady deal on the street of Chicago, <laughs> but we did it. Um, but no, a lot she, of shady she, exchanges going on around those streets downtown, yeah, but you ex- know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But we did it and I got to play and I mean, sh- could I watch the gameplay? Sure. Or even like stayed awake to watch when Ari was playing. But Ari kept dying so many times. I was just so tired. No, just kidding. He was, he was doing great. And but... playing on story mode as well. <laughs> exactly. No. You don't know how many times I just, ugh, we'll get into that. But yeah. but this game for me is very special because, and I not that I wasn't so excited for it, but none of the trailers really sold me until the very last one that was shown at Celebration. Mm. And I was like, okay. But I'm a, I was a bit hesitant because I'm like, how is this going to advance the story from Fallen Order? Fallen Order is is something that I connect to a lot. It's a very emotional story, you know, post Order sixty six story, an Order six story, Order sixty six story, and I'm like, I don't know how they're gonna. And there's even a five year jump, and Battle Scars was not all that good. What? Not not that that's a reflection of the game, but I'm like, what exciting story is there to tell? I feel like the Inquisitor story has been played out already i'm like why are they gonna just face a new inquisitor what's going on and this story just like i I feel like it very much in the sense that if you guys have heard our high republic chatter i would call fallen order the equivalent to light of the jedi and 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 jedi survivor the equivalent to to rising storm 
Survivor yeah. was just back crazy. Like it was just yeah. like next level, huge. Like the replayability is there, and it is just a much more complete game than than Fallen Order is. And and you get to do there's so much to still do in the game. And I'm like, I could play this for hours. Mm. And I literally cried several points into playing this game because it was just that impactful and, and some of the scenes were just so sad and i didn't realize and i cried because of of the of what the characters did in fallen order and how far they've come and in, in this game and it just was such an experience and i'm super glad i got to play i'm, I'm very grateful that i got to experience it um the first like the the some of the chorus on stuff with ari because that was genuinely cool and we were both like, you know, yeah. just reacting to it, like, oh my god, that's so cool, and blah blah blah. And mm -hmm. and then I got to play it, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta play it because I love Fallen Order, and it's an experience. You know, you get whoever's streaming it on YouTube, you only get you only get their perspective. You don't get to walk around the way you would want to, and in, in the game. And I I was so immersed in this, it felt like I was there. Like once I detached from the game, it felt like I was taking off my VR headset. If I was playing like Vader Immortal, it felt like I was just coming out of the game. Um, so it, this game was just all in all a damn good ride. It was a damn good ride. I felt uh, em I felt so emotional at the end. I feel wrecked, emotionally wrecked at the end. I was just like, how am I going to want to keep playing this game? So yeah. <laughs> very touching story. Love this game. Hit on every level. Um, do I like it more than Fallen Order? I wouldn't. I I love how how contained Jedi Fallen Order story is, and how very grounded it is. Not that this story isn't grounded, but it, it it's a lot. So I think Fallen Order for me is is emotional aspect. I love Fallen Order and how I could connect to it. But Survivor, just oh man, it's so good. How how did, how were they able to manage? I if someone said yeah. not Survivor tops Fallen Order, I would not argue because. Like I said, mm -hmm. Fallen Order is my favorite Star Wars game experience, all that. And and if someone s sat here and said, maybe Ari thinks this way, maybe Survivor mm -hmm. is better than Fallen Order. I'm like, yeah, great. I, I, I totally see where you're coming from. But Ari, how do yeah. you feel about the game? Yeah. Well, to answer that question straight off the bat, I'd say it's just, it's too early to tell it's so hard, but the fact that they are um, at, the, at each other's level, the fact that Survivor reached the, the heights of Fallen Order just is a testament to how good the game is. Um, I think Fallen Order would just get the edge just because um, it, it, it was like also new to us then. Um, but but I don't know. It, that, that, it doesn't even matter. They're both fantastic. But no, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, in terms of my experience, I was, uh, yeah, I, it came out Friday morning, went to the store, got it, downloaded it, started playing it pretty much straight away. And yeah, Mike, Mike was there for the first like two or three hours, which was super fun because uh you know we, we were just vibing and, and experiencing all that together um what else yeah man just i i i mean we'll get into specifics later but yeah the, I, I just was transcended back to that those first few hours on coruscant which were just a, amazing and such a blast and yeah i did i did keep on uh falling off the off, off the edge man handrails they, they're a great thing star wars put put them in put them into into your universe wouldn't hurt. um but yeah, no, uh, I was, I was, wait, wait, Mike, real quick. What, what mode did you play on? Did you do story mode as well? Uh, I did a uh, Jedi Knight. Is that the one above? No, I'm just kidding. I did story mode. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, I did okay. story mode. I, I mean, was too big, too big of a chicken to even try that yet. Yeah. Yeah. I, and for us, we wanted to like get, not, we didn't want to finish it quickly, but we did it at the same time. So we can come right. on here, review it and, and not get any uh, spoilers or whatever. So um, anyway, I was playing on story mode. Uh, how do I feel about this game? It was incredible. The, it, it was so fantastic. Um, I remember maybe with four or five hours left. In fact, Mike called me when he was up to this point. Um, oh, by the way, spoilers. Spoilers for the game. If, if you haven't watched it, uh, stop, stop watching oh, yeah. now. Um, okay, oh, yeah. so good, good call. if you haven't left yet, that, that's, that's <laughs> on you. Okay, seriously, leave now if you haven't played the game. Sorry, John Michael. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, Mike called me around the point where Bode had, had just betrayed uh, the team. And I remember thinking just before then that we were going to, the game was about to wrap up. And then we went on for another four or five hours. I was like, oh my God, there's just so much 
meat in this game, which is just fantastic. Um, Grease was just a standout to me. I actually didn't really connect with uh, really any of the characters in the first game outside of Cal, uh, but this game completely changed the the uh, that whole perspective for me. I fell in love with Grease. I love that man so much now. Seer was an absolute standout. Um, yeah, there's so much to to just dissect in this game. I think the um that from a gameplay perspective we probably won't talk about that that much because we're not gamers we're not gaming experts um but i will say from a gameplay perspective i love what they did how they kept it very familiar um and you know we got all the abilities we learned in the first game we kept um but they they just improved on it slightly which is all they had to do um you know th even things like fast travel that was great um some of the combat <laughs> yeah. stuff was super cool uh, I admit I was getting really frustrated because I, I liked the um, the double bladed lightsaber stance, and I would get caught in the animation of that so many times, but I didn't even care because I just loved watching Cal just go like <laughs> with the yeah. lightsaber. But uh, yeah, no, overall, man, Survivor just it, it was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. Um, let, let's go through it though. Let's 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 start with the Coruscant thing. That that was the first two or three hours of the game. Yeah. What did you think of the opening? How how that all play out for oh, you? So cinematic, yeah, like yeah. so. I I got chills just as you mentioned. Like, how did you feel about Coruscant? So cinematic, and and I love yeah. seeing uh, it play out. Like we were we were tricked. I'm like, oh, I think these. I think it's a setup, but but I'm curious to how it's gonna go. And it, it was just perfect. Like we were thrown right into the action. Cal looking at the Jedi Temple, like that. We seen that shot on the trailer. That was great. I mean, I should say at the Imperial Palace, and 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 you had like some galactic senator there from Utapau in the mix, and I'm like, this is just so Star Wars. Like this feels like, um, like like something out of like the books and everything. So to see that come along alive in the games, I was like, man, this is so good. I don't know something about the writers that do these games. Which shout out Matt Mikovitz, who who's been a writer since Clone Wars. He he co-wrote the game, and. I just feel like they just know their stuff and and I just love hearing uh not necessarily references but like where we are in the timeline how the galaxy is um like as we're walking with Cal with his escort team uh you hear people being like hey I, I'm a citizen I have rights and the stormtrooper was just like beating him down I'm like yeah this is you know the empire is not really playing nice with citizens at this point and and yeah, it, it was just cool to see this this galaxy and especially Coruscant. It felt like we were at home, um, but but the whole senator yacht thing was great. I mean, I was the the point in this story that uh, or in this section of the story that I mouth drop open was when the ninth sister showed up. I was like, oh, big mama, big mama is in town and she's ready to eat, and and. It was just it was such a cool moment because as we know um and i was just talking to a, a friend about this whether we were having like a little I th actually i think it was aiden tarth deacon we we were like talking about you know whether ninth sister survived or not and i was like you know what i think she did because they don't go out of their way to say that she died and it was like oh i defeated the ninth sister that's all cal says so i'm like well i think we'll see her in the second game he's like yeah me too and guess what Right at right at the beginning, but he kills her, and I was first mouth drop moment because when they're hold when they're you know stopped by the imperial gunships and they have the senator and a lightsaber just comes swinging out, you don't understand. Like I just love the inquisitorious. I think rebels did such a great job at bringing the grand inquisitor. It's like oh he's this Jedi hunter. Okay, cool concept, great. And then it gets expanded. Wait, there's more Inquisitors, as we found out. Oh, and they refer to them as brother and sister. And then we just got like, we just kept digging and digging uh, the lore aspect with them. And I absolutely love. So anyways, my sister comes out with that lightsaber. And I was like, who could have been? Like, it was so cool. And then nine sister comes out and just absolute chills. I'm like, perfect. Yeah, let's continue this story. Immediately, she yells out, cast ass. And... It was, it was just a great moment for me. I'm like, oh, man, I ate that stuff up. But seeing Cal um, work with with a different group kind of hurt in a, in a wrong way. And also, you know, it, it tied back to his conversation with Seer about 
in Jedi Fallen Order about working with Saul. You know, we we had some revelations on Kashyyyk uh, during Fallen Order's campaign of him being like, damn, Saul's brutal. So for him to go even admitting how brutal Saul is and, and seeing that Saul abandoned the fight against Kashyyyk and he gave up on the Wookiees because he no longer saw a fight there, you know, and Cal still joined up with him years later. And oh, that's kind of kind of rubs you the wrong way. It's like, Cal, what are you doing, man? So it, lots of cool revelations here. And we get introduced to Bode, who right away from the get go, you know, I'm just like this Bode character. I don't know about him. I think he's going to. He's gonna do. He's gonna be up to the to the naughty, but and he was. But yeah, what a great introduction uh, in, in this in this first section of course on like it was just so cinematic. So yeah. loved it. A plus. Like I said, that Inquisitor reveal was insane. Like I literally had chills when that lightsaber came popping up because I'm like secretly I'm like, is it the Grand Inquisitor? Is it the Grand Inquisitor? But then it was Nine Sister. I'm like, great. I'm equally as satisfied. But how about you? Did you, did you, yeah. what was your reaction to the Inquis Inquisitor reveal? Were you expecting to see Inquisitor so early? And uh, what else did you think of the Coruscant stuff? Yeah, I definitely wasn't expecting to see the Inquisitors so early, but I loved the, uh, the reveal of it. And, and I actually just loved that that was the only Inquisitor presence in the game because the first game had such a heavy focus on it. And this was almost a goodbye to that. Um, but yeah, I love that they brought back the Night Sister. Um, yeah, and, and I agree with you. Totally just cinematic. And I love the um oh, I'm forgetting the word for it, but like the uh what what uh, sto a, a storytelling method that they use when uh you know the the characters are they've been captured and we sort of don't know what's going on, but then you know it turns out there was a plan all along. Like I loved I I just love that sort of introduction that they do oh, the trope all the time. Yeah, the trope, that's the word. Um I love I love that trope. So I thought that was that was fantastic. Um yeah, super cool seeing the Imperial Palace again, and, and I could I so agree on the bow thing. I didn't I, I I didn't think it was a spy or something early on. I just was like, what is this guy's deal, man? It's so yeah. weird, and I, I was almost like cringing at like the the forced bromance between the two at the start, at least. But I, I think just before Bode had betrayed, I I felt the bromance was like real, but it felt so like fake and forced at the start. I would say, um, but I think. I think that was sort of intentional because we were meant to think like, oh, something's a bit off with this. Like this doesn't. Qu right. Question for you. Sorry, I don't yeah. mean to interrupt your sure. your your take on Coruscant. But did you with Bode on Coruscant? Did you feel when he kept probing Cal Kestis for like his involvement with this group, how long he's known Saul yeah. for, yeah. And, and then and then Cal making a comment about him to one of the crew members like, I like him, but he's a bit chatty. Did you get mm -hmm. um? senator travis from rebels did you get that type of vibe when they're running Ooh. from the empire and he keeps probing hera like you must have so many allies like yeah, how, right. you what are the resources i yeah. literally got that same feeling and maybe because i had just watched the episode but i had yeah. that same feeling i'm like this guy's asking too many questions for yeah. someone that's an, a new guy and, and that's when I had the suspect. So did you feel mm. that at all? I, I didn't feel that. That's a great comparison, though. I I, I just felt something was off. I Honestly, I, the moment I thought, okay, Bode is, is 100% uh, a, an Imperial or a traitor or something was when um, when, when they just defeat the, the High Republic guy. And the, he's like, I'm going to stick around, see if there's yeah. a manual. That's when I was like, okay, what the hell? Um, but up until then, I was reasonably like, okay, Bode, the vibe is off. Uh, but I didn't think he was a, he was a traitor just yet. But um, I loved that Utapal senator as well. That was so yeah. Cool. Um, that was I'm great. kind of annoyed they killed him off though because I I liked I know. his energy. A I lot. did like him. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. The the Saw Gerrera stuff was great. I love I love that they're working with him and the the absence of the Mantis crew is so felt mm -hmm. in this opening sequence. It's just the whole car or something, which I love. Um. Because. Yeah, it just it, it sets up the story in such a good way where you know we're wondering that, and I think, man, I, I don't want to rag on the Mandalorian season three anymore because it's over, thank God. But like, this was just such compelling storytelling. Like, um, and I know Survivor is a very different medium to to a TV show, um, and there is more time for like down moments and, and stuff. But but those were just the best moments in the whole game. Was just the down moments with the characters and. Um, you know, the, Bode and and Cal talking about um, 
uh, Bode's daughter, like moments like that were just fantastic. And, and they just enriched the story so much, which I loved. Um, even like, you know, you know, the attention to detail in, in these games is just next level. Like, um, even just walking past a citizen and they'll say one line, and I'll be like, well, and you actually learn something just from that. So, um, you, you know, you got to be playing with your headphones in and, and your ears turned on the whole time, but just because there's so much stuff coming at you constantly in the best possible way. Um, but yeah, I guess this is just to add to my over, overall thoughts, but yeah, just the foundation that Fallen Order set, I just felt Survivor just built on that perfectly. Like it just could not have been better. Um, but yeah, overall Coruscant was great. Uh, then we were, we're on to, oh man, I, f- I should really should have wrote this down. I'm, I'm not well prepared. What's the name of the planet that Grease is, is settled on? Kobol? Yeah, that sounds about right. Kobo or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, well, first of all, what, what do you think of that planet? And then how'd you feel running back into Grease? That planet is huge. Yeah. <laughs> and can I just say, I love that this game is so filled up with people and it's lively because replaying Fallen Order, um, like just if, if you're done with all the stuff or even you want to explore, it's so lonely. And and I love some of those lonely times, you know, just the the low moments where you get to walk around and it's nothing but creatures around you. But it's too lonely on Zepho. Like I can tell you that much. It's creepy lonely. And when you have people walking about and everything, it's great. And and you have like you see battle droids fighting stormtroopers on Cobalt. That's great. And then you see the settler or the citizen or whatever the the people that live there, the population reacting in real time to the Star Destroyer being, you know, in orbit of the planet, I think is great. Um, but I love Cobalt. There's just some so much to do. There's a Jedi Temple on Cobalt. Uh, there's there's a Star Destroyer on Cobalt. There's Cloud City on Cobalt. Like, it's just, it's so great. Like, there's so many cool, uh, an Imperial base on, on Cobalt, droid base. Like, there's just so much. An aquarium on Cobalt. It's just great. Um, lots to explore, lots to do there. Um, but, and just, I just can't wait to, you know, dive back into Cobalt, into the game and go explore and stuff. They just seem so cool. Uh, but, but it, I think it's a great settlement. Oh yeah. And, and, uh, damn, what do you call those ships? The separatist, uh, ships with the ball, the sphere in the middle. Um, what do you call that? Uh, what do they call them? Like uh, the Hulk stations or whatever. Loker, Luker Hulk. That's the name. Luker yeah, Hulk. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, it, they have one of those. So it's just, it's a big, big, big map. Huge. Um, but running back into Grease was great. He's changed. I kind of like that this wasn't like the cliche movie trope of let's get the band back together. You definitely didn't get that sense because low key it's what Cal wanted, but life had other plans. And and plus, um, when it, things did start to seem like they were going in that direction, they just ended up not. And And, you know. That, that's cool because I, I just hate that movie trope of like, let's get the band together. Like Force Awakens, like we're going to get the band back together with Han and Leia. It's a reunion. Great. We know. Um, and should have been Luke there. But but anyways, if you were going to do that trope, you should have gone all the way. But um, but I think that uh, Grease, I love Grease. I, lo- I love his comedic humor in <laughs> in the first game. And I, it's just an ex- it's an extension of his character here. We get so many moments we get to see where he's at. I mean, I, I love reading about him in Battle Scars and how he lost his arm and how much he's changed in fighting the Empire. He doesn't want to fight. And neither does he here. He does he doesn't he's not up for the fight, but once he hears about a safe haven, he's like, Yeah, let's get it. You know, and no, I just love Greece. He's a he's a beautiful soul. So Running into him back again was great. I was just like, all right, let's go find the others type deal. But again, I did. I like that. It wasn't like, let's get the band back together type deal. It's like, we're going to go visit Seer. That's it. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't like, let's go recruit Seer and, and Marin and whatever. But it, yeah, it was great. Like Grease is, is that homie to Cal and, and I love that, you know, so Grease is just yeah. a unique character and love his look, by the way, love his long hair. Yeah, I know. He was, he was looking fine as hell um 
Yeah, no, Grease was awesome, man. He was like one of the standouts of this whole game to me. Just he had his own little mini arc, and uh, I just I just love his love his infectious energy. Uh, shout yeah, out Turgo. Turgo shout Cobo. out what? Turgo on Cobble, by the way. <laughs> the, the frog. The frog was so funny. <laughs> the frog was very funny. Um, yeah, Kobo was awesome though. It gave me very um oh man, I'm struggling with names. What, what was the name of the first planet in Fallen Order? Uh Bogano. Bogano? Yeah, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, it, it gave me like sort of it was sort of that planet in this game, except so much bigger. Uh um, yes. yeah, seeing like the battle droids was awesome, getting to fight them. Uh, you know, the raiders was were cool. I really liked Ravis as a as a villain or a, I guess he wasn't really a villain at the end. Oh no, he, he pretty he stayed true to his his villain arc. Oh, Mike, you're looking very imperial over there. Yeah, no, I I, I thought it fit the look since I, I look imperial anyways. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you yeah, know, the Raiders were cool. Ravis was a great character. Yeah, Kobo was great. There's so much to to go and explore there. I, I haven't touched the game since I since I finished the story, so I'm super excited to get into that. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the High Republic, because High Republic fans are eating good with this game. Like, I just did not expect to get so... I, I mean, we knew coming in that there was going to be some High Republic stuff. Potentially, the villain was going to be, you know, a High Republic character, which it was in the end, or at least one of them was. Um, but yeah, shout out the High Republic, man. We we got flashbacks where we were in the in the golden era of the Republic, which was unbelievable. And then... It gets revealed to us that uh, Dagon is the uh, is sort of the villain of the story, I guess, until Boat is. But yeah, man, ha- what what do you think of all the High Republic stuff and and Dagon and uh, Z? Z was super fun, gave me uh, mega L three vibes. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, how'd you go with all that stuff? So much to say. I don't even know if I'll get to it all, and I definitely won't. But yeah, um, and I definitely don't want to ramble, so I'll keep it short. But <laughs> all in all, I just. This is great because, you know, Ari and I know what the High Republic is. We've met, we, we've read most of the books um, and so have some of you, but the larger audience has not. Um, and it was just a cool way to kind of pique people's interest into the era and kind of show them what it's kind of about and, and get some background info, general info. So people can start, you know, not to not you have to read the books to understand Acolyte, but kind of point you in that direction if you want more of the area era we got the books and and i love that what we saw was a reflection of what we've seen in in, in some of the books especially in the in the second phase that they're doing more of like a romantic thing with some of the characters so that was cool to see on uh on screen with dagon and uh what was i'm sorry what was the jedi's name jedi uh uh oh, the, the companion i think the companion yeah. um I'm gonna say Ari, but that's not right. Um, I forgot <laughs> I what her na- what her name was, but that. yeah, but that was such a unique, fresh, new story for us. Not not just the High Republic aspect, but what they were doing with the with the secret realm and everything. Like that was what a unique story for Star Wars. Like I thought this was like okay, this is great. Um, but you know, I, I love uh, what's his name, Dagnan, da- Dagon, Dagon. I love Dagon. Dagon. Uh, yeah, yeah. I love Dagon's character a lot. Obviously, very reminiscent of Anakin. Uh, but this man was obsessed with getting to this place, and and he just wanted he 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 wanted it. And then it was cool how the story unfolded, where we learned, you know, some of the actions he did afterwards. And I love that it wasn't just force echoes that we got to pick up. We got to see some of the stuff visualized for us. You oh, know, yeah. And yeah, that was that great. Was That's awesome. that. This is a step up from Fallen Order because in Fallen Order we would just get like hear voices, and this time around we got to mm. see visuals and stuff. Um, yeah. So that was great. That was great because in Fallen Order, when you're on that Venator on on Zetho exploring the the abandoned Venator, the crashed one, you mm. go through the entire thing learning about a Padawan and his master, but you only hear the echoes of it. Imagine we got to see that visualized. That would have been cool. Even with so that was very cool the way they did it here. Um, it was just it was great. Like I I want to this story is so dense and and yeah. complex and I'm dying to play the game again uh, to yeah. to or maybe just watch it on YouTube because I don't know if I could <laughs> be put up playing that many hours of a video game again for a while. <laughs> but I just want to dive back into the story and and 
and see how it all unravels again. Like that was the most like cool thing about the game was seeing how the yeah. story like unraveled it and then realizing that it's like, oh, it's not over. Even though yeah. and, and the way and the way they or I should say Cal discover this. Did we ever learn how he ended up in that back the tank? Uh yeah, because the, the the girl cuts his arm off and then she oh, says that's right. she's like that's we right. need we get him a back the tank or whatever. That's right. And somehow he was crypto frozen for so many years. Yeah. <laughs> hundreds of years. But th- that was so cool how Cal unfreezes him. And I was like I mean, just explaining to the droid how much the galaxy has changed was was already overwhelming for me. Just trying to like, if I was in that room trying to catch up somebody on two hundred years, oh my god! Uh, and and then for this person, for for Cal to tell this new acquaintance he, he's found, and and then it's so cool. Also, it was that our first time on screen watching a kyber crystal change. I think, I think so, so. Yeah. That oh, was man, very. I forgot about that. That was, that was awesome. there's so many things. There's this when I talked to Ari about the game after I finished it, I was just like, or we were both. Like, I think Ari was actually the one that said it before I even could get it out of my mouth. He's like, "There's so much to unpack." I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> like there is." And, and we're we're probably gonna talk for like an hour here, and and we're only brushing the surface. Like there's exactly so much depth so and substance m- to the story, and then the actual game as well. Exactly, there was just so much stuff. And and I absolutely love um, th- that we learned Ravis's connection to uh, Dagnan. Mm. Oh, that Is was that, that his was name? Dagnan. Yeah, Dagnan. Um, yeah, yeah. Dagnan. Uh, that was very cool. Like that was cool. It was cool. It's like you thought Ravis was just gonna be this like boring. Yeah, shout out New York. Um, <laughs> I thought that's what you were doing there, but never mind. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even trying to. But yeah, look what you're doing that. Well. No, sorry. Um, yeah, I just I, I thought Ravis was just gonna be this big, you know, boring bad guy that we would have to fight, but yeah, his connection yeah. and his allegiance to Dagon mm-hmm. was what made him so interesting, uh, because yeah. of his you know the whole loyalty thing that he had yeah. and everything. Very 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 cool character. Um, mm-hmm. and yeah, like I just love the way unfolded. And by the end of the game, when you go to this realm, because you see things attacking uh the the planet um what's the planet uh tatalon tanalon yeah tanalon yeah the end go and you see all these ships attacking it what did you oh, think no, tanalor sorry tanalor tanalor yeah. okay did you think that was the nile yeah it was and and it actually did you have subtitles on yes yeah because it, it actually confirms um at some point it says the attackers in brackets nile Oh, I didn't even yeah. see that. I yeah. guess I was. Just I, I, know, I I I was shocked that I picked that up because I never pick up stuff like that. But I saw no. that. Yeah. So you know when I picked, it was the Nile. You know when I realized that I'm like, oh, where they confirmed that it was the Nile was when? uh at the end of the game uh, on Tanalor, there was a force echo right before you met up with Bode, and mm. I went to go to go touch it or sense it, and it was Opal Rancisus being like. The temple is under attack. It's the Naiho. They have come for us oh. all. For us all, evacuate. And I was like, oh, "Oh my god, that is so cool." Also, shout out Oppo Rancisus because he got, he got another shout out. It might have been in a, in a different echo or something. But I remember talking about the someone was talking about the Jedi Council and and his name was mentioned. So, oh, that's shout so out cool. to him. <laughs> yeah. Shout out him. Yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. So, the High Republic stuff. It's like and now I'm curious how this will tie into the books yeah. because would yeah, this happen? Too. In phase three, or like at least mentioned, at least the event. Surely, happening. surely mentioned. I think that's so yeah, cool. I, I think I mentioned is shout out, and shout out. Yeah, to... also, yeah, phase three of Higher Republic is gonna be awesome. Unrelated, but but now with all this and and the mm-hmm. afterlight, like man, it's gonna be great. Exactly, and shout out to all the High Republic authors who mm. who set up the the who really the architects of this of this era that yeah. got to set everything Pioneers. up and yeah. and now everything's being expanded. So High Republic stuff. A plus and everybody's eating good. Uh, how about you, Ari? Exactly what, right. Any, any thoughts? What do you have to add? Oh, I, I don't have anything to add to that, honestly. But yeah, that it, the higher public gets the love it deserves, and I know a lot of people are just weirdly like resentful of the higher public. I, I don't even know why. Um, but hopefully, this is shows those people oh, higher public's actually pretty cool. You should check it out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's. Uh, I think that's everything, or at least as much as we can cover from that part of the game. Let's move to Jeddah. 
because man, the cool stuff there. First of all, I think the biggest thing, uh, Cordova is alive. I, and I think, yeah, yeah, I just, I just assumed he was dead. I, I don't remember them specifically saying, oh, Cordova dies in order 66, but I have really intense, like Qui-Gon Jinn vibes from, from that character. Um, and seeing, seeing him, him revealed, that was an awesome moment and, and just something that I didn't see coming at all, but it, it makes sense. Cause yeah, we never see the character die. They don't even really mention it. So that was super cool. Um, I love what they're doing on Jeddah with, with Seer up, man. Seer, I really didn't connect with, with her in the last game, but this game, she was fantastic. I love everything they did with her. Um, even just to wait to the way that she looks, she looks so badass in this game. Like last game, she was literally just wearing like a jacket or something like that. But this game, she had a whole look going on. It was fantastic. Um, and yet she's, you know, building up the, um, the, the archives, the Jedi archives, which is awesome. Um, yeah, man, so much to unpack from Jedi. I just, I just love being in Jedi in general and learning about that planet more because, you know, obviously we do see it in Rogue One. Um, and yeah, we, we shout out to the Obi-Wan series, I guess, because the path is, is a major, major part of this game. Uh, I thought it would be a little bit more, once they started mentioning and we started doing missions, I thought we would get a bit more payoff for that. Um, which I guess we did or we did not, we just didn't really see it, but I think the Tanner Law stuff is like this. They want the path to that for that to be the place for it. Um, anyway, the path stuff was awesome. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about Marin in a sec, but what did you think of, of all the Jedi, Jedi stuff, including Cordova and, and all that? Another, another thing that I'm like, I'm, I'm going to try to keep this short, but I can't type the, or I don't want to ramble, but it was all amazing. Yeah. Cordova, I jumped out of my seat literally. I went ape because this, I played Fallen Order like five, six times now. Um, I think, yeah, no, I just completed my fifth run of it. And you know, Cordova, I just love sitting there and whatever trails that we will pick on or pick on from him in the game, uh, whatever mission he would, you know, we would get to and BD started like playing audio of him or holograms. Like it was just it was just yeah like a qui-gon gen vibe and i just always felt relaxed and i love where Eno cordova was at um with with the jedi order and he was always trying to do something else he was always a strange guy he was always on his own mission so that would i've i've loved them from the start um but when BD runs up to the person that's coming out of the temple, I swear I thought it was Seer because I'm like, oh, we, we're about to see Seer. And then when the camera points up and it's Cordova, I just had the most like visceral reaction because I was like, no way. Like I thought it was like flashback or something. And I was like, wait a minute, like what, what's going on? It was so cool to, to, I would love to revisit, you know, if someone recorded me, like just, you know, uh during that i would have loved to see my reaction because i literally just sprung up and was like no way so that was such a cool revelation and did i feel he was wasted somewhat but that's just selfishly because i was like man i just want more eno cordova but he he's a great guy and it was so cool to to get more of him because yeah he was presumed dead by order 66 um so and no he was he was just out there in the unknown regions uh or unknown regions doing research and stuff and trying to do more research on all the visions he was having and he came back and things changed things changed so loved him the jetta stuff was great except for that stupid scorpion thing i'm just like i just want to walk around like why do we have to it, that was such a stupid thing where you're walking around and the scorpion thing attacked you i'm like for what like i was like yeah whatever sure uh like you couldn't even walk or it would get you or whatever so that was super annoying. But other than that, like all the stuff with there was amazing. Seeing the Trident assault ship drilling through Jeddah, like an Imperial version of it was insane. Like my little Clone Wars tingles went on. I was like, oh man, like that is so cool. Um, so much to say, like the Jeddah story was just great because you get to see what the Empire is doing out there uh, to Jeddah during this time. It's like, yeah, they they're on this immediately and i almost thought the reason saul guerrera came to Jeddah was because of uh, of what seer and the rest of them were doing there maybe cal told him later on like hey go to Jeddah." you know it's like maybe that's why he sets up base there i don't know 
maybe maybe he was already there but um I mean, that would that would be a cool ass connection if you're watching Rogue One. I mean, like, oh, the whole reason he's there is because of 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 Cal and his group. Um, so that was cool. And seeing Seer, listen, I love Seer in in the first Fallen Order game. At first, she's very suspect because it's like, what does this lady want? Is she trying to use Cal? Um, she was very suspect, but but you know, she just has a she's like an onion. You know, you got to really dig deep to. To find maybe an onion's not, but she's just she's a layered character, you know, and 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 she's not you can't she's difficult to read. Um, and once you get to know her though, she she means well, and even though she may not communicate that all, always, she means well. And even I love the speech that she tells Cow into in in Jedi Fallen Order where she says, um being a Jedi is is always fighting the dark side. It's it's not, a, you know, she she says this great speech about always like it, that's the test. It's always fighting. It's it's the it's the reason to fight. You know that that that's what makes us who we are. And I'm like, for me on a level of you know dealing with anxiety and stuff, I just you know on a consistent basis like like anxiety disorder. Um, I related to that so much because I was like, oh my god, like that is so true. It's it's that fight to keep fighting. That makes you who you are, you know. It's like, is every day gonna be easy? No, but it's that you keep fighting. That's like you're trying to to be better and, and do better. So also seeing her struggle with the dark side in the first game was great. Um, to see that in her fight with Vader. By the way, just want to say, can we talk about the Vader fight? Yes. Uh, we we can we can. We're not up to it, but we can talk about it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I, I just well, I'll just say this. Um. Her mention, we could talk about that later, but her mention to the the big question that I had uh, to set this up, the big question that I had was, is Seer going to, you know, be a dark sider by the time we meet her in Survivor? Uh, because she, in her fight, even though she was like, cut herself off from the forest for using the dark side, she uses the dark side against Vader. And it's like, damn, I really want to explore this. And Battle Scars somewhat explored it where she even uses the dark set again and then survivor um she was like no i've i'm not i'm not afraid anymore i'm not i'm not fearful i have nothing to fear type you know like the kind of like kane and jars moment in rebels where like, i have nothing left to fear um because but made her turn to the dark side was out of fear um which master yoda says that's what happens um so that was such a great moment for her to tell vader like Oh, what you saw last time? Yeah, I'm over that. I have nothing to fear. I was like, oh man, that was great. And 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 yeah, Seer Seer was amazing in this game. Um, love that she was just so keen on protecting the legacy of the order and making sure she was putting seeds in to you know um, with with the path and everything to to make the Jedi or revive the jedi order and everything and and yeah it's it's you just see the impact of destroying the holocron which which cal brings up a couple times you see the impact of destroying the holocron what what that meant seer went on this different path of well it's like you know you destroyed my access to gain those kids well i'm just gonna reach out i'll reach to other jedi and stuff and and we're gonna you know just create an under underground um service to to protect the legacy of the order and stuff so i don't know it was just great to interact with seer throughout the game just wanted more of her so shout out seer and all the jetta stuff again the visuals on that were so amazing just so much to say little time yeah absolutely um i mean yeah i i also love uh kind of adding to what i said earlier about building on the foundation of fallen order i love that as you said, the the destroying of the holocron is actually brought into the into the game. Like it's it's. Uh, I think you can go and interact with the holocron on the mantis, and if you do, he's like still wonder every day if I made the right decision or something like that. Like it's still relevant, it's still talked about, which I love. Um, also, don't mind me with my head down. I'm trying to look through all the cutscenes to make sure we're not missing anything. Um, but uh, yeah, and and also love what you said about about the fight. Uh, the fight with the dark side being a fight you do every day and that comparison to like, you know, something like anxiety is, yeah, that's, that's a fantastic comparison. Um, but yeah, uh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Marin because 
her and Cal have a very interesting sort of uh, relationship throughout the whole thing. I, I didn't realize there was a whole thing online about like shipping the two as a, as a couple, but uh, oh, really? apparently there is. And I know I genuinely didn't know that. I, I kind of saw their whole relationship as, as platonic and sort of like an Ezra Sabine type situation. So to see that go in that direction, I was, uh, I wasn't disappointed by it by any stretch, but I was sort of like, Oh, okay. That's what we're doing. Like it really caught me off guard. Um, but, uh, yeah, Marin comes back and I thought, I thought she was cool throughout this game, man. I don't know. She was the one that I didn't totally vibe with. I, I think I, I, I sort of related to the other characters a lot more with, with Sia, Grease and Cal, but, uh, Marin was cool. what do you think? Yeah, no, I really like Marin, uh, in, in this game. And, uh, I love that she kept harping on the fact that it's like, you know, or you just see the growth in her character a lot because she went from joining them to exact vengeance on the empire for what happened to her sisters, but because she couldn't destroy the separatists um, because they weren't around anymore. So she was exacting that vengeance on the empire and, and, you know, just, just throwing out her ang her anger on them. And you just see the growth of the character in this game where she's like, all involved in, in in what the Jedi are doing, and I'm like, that is so cool. If Ventress was still around, I think that's something that she would be doing, just uh, just like Marin is doing. Not to group people together of of one species, but I really think or one cult, but I really think that that's what Ventress would be doing. And Marin was just there, all all hands on deck, trying to help see her with everything, and and Marin just going hopping around the galaxy trying to help and everything was was great like she just had so much character development and i love how she her speech by the campfire when it was just her and cal and she's like cal look into the fire like at, you know at, at night it protects you when you're trying to sleep but if it goes unnoticed then you're engulfed by it or something and i thought that was just great and a great um kind of metaphor is to how Cal is fighting the empire and stuff, you know, or even losing himself. So I think she, she had some great character beats and I love the way she was there for Cal emotionally too. And, and being like, Cal, this empire has taken so much from us. Don't let it take you too. And I was like, damn, that is so good. So I absolutely love Marin in this game a lot. She, she has grown up a lot, a lot of character growth. You're muted by the way. You're muted. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was just going to say, I said, yeah, I agree. And something I love with Marin, this game was last game. She really looked like this uh, witch from another universe. You know what I mean? But then she sort of just slipped into being like a normal person who I guess is still still a witch at the same time, which I, I, I love that outfit. The outfits in this game, which is awesome, man. Like, yes. A lot, um, I actually, me and Mike were talking about this briefly. This is sort of a side note, but... I never changed the look of Cal throughout the whole game. Not his face, not his his <clears throat> his um his clothes, nothing like that. I loved the way he looked, and I, I yeah, I and same for all the characters. I already mentioned Sia, uh, Mike mentioned Grey's, uh, Marin as well. Like yeah, I just I vibe with that a lot. But but what what's your take, real quick, on like the changing of the costume and all the cosmetics and that sort of stuff? I changed around because I found some you know some clothing and some boxes so if we were on jenna and i found like this jedi costume i put it on because it felt like it felt very last airbendery uh so i changed it right into that and i was just flying around with that like you know how you jump and then you could like do like a swoosh in there and just kind of like yeah. glide that was great um that was so, so satisfying by the way double double jump yes. and then and then the dash that, was, that great. was great yeah dash um that was great but the costume thing I there was a time when I went back to the original uh, default because it's just so good. It's yeah. just so good. It, I yeah. love that survivor outfit, and I love that he gets to wear his old outfit as well when Grease is still hanging on to it. Like that's yeah. cool too. But yeah, great customization by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Much more variety than the last game and the, <laughs> and the ponchos. But I'm, don't get me wrong, love a good poncho, and so yeah, does our do. Cameron Monaghan. But uh, uh, also, real quick, did you say your thoughts on the path? Yeah. I thought that oh, was sorry. Cool. I, I think it, it was glitching out for a bit for me. I think I lost you for a minute. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, anyway, so sort of moving on with the story, there's we, we do a whole lot of, you know, treasure hunts and stuff. And, and eventually we find the compass that we need to take us to Tantalor. And this is where I was like, oh, great. 
that they're all sitting by the fire and, and it was sort of the end of the game i'm like this is this is nice you know I, I, this just feels right yeah. um you know we defeat ravis we defeat dagon um who i really thought were the two big bads of, of the of, i was about to say the show but no the game yeah. um and we think we're about to set uh set our path to tamalor but no bode says no i've got other plans i'm i'm just gonna stick by and see if there's a manual for this thing as he says um but yeah uh the bode betrayal was was one reveal and then bang two seconds later we lose a real one in in cordova so man what do you think of what and then what do you think of all this but let's also talk about how you know he used to be a jedi he, and and cal sort of dies for a second there uh, and, and then we'll move on to the seer stuff but yeah oh, how did yeah. that all play out for you that you know we go from defeating the big bads getting the compass we're on our way and then bode says actually i'm good man the, to turn the <laughs> twist of the events like it was just it felt like very last supper jesus and the last supper that story uh, right before judas betrays him and whatever and turns him over to the roman empire um very much of those vibes um i thought um it, it, it was crazy because then the base attack happens and it, everything just gets thrown into the fan and we lose cordova and it, it's just insane and yeah we, yeah we even lose cal but when Bo did it, i when cal was screaming like bode chills like i was just like he it was generally genuine he felt genuinely betrayed yeah. i saw it coming from a mile away also i, I love that we the player got to chase bode as well yeah well, while was he was cool. yelling that yeah that yeah. was cool i mean I, I saw it coming from a mile away even from the trailer i'm like this guy is same suspect yeah. and his story wasn't all that convincing but i'm like what are his motivations that's what i was curious about um and and because i'm like he i don't think he's working with the empire and he was, but not in the way that we thought. Um, it was more of kind of like a bargain type thing. Um, so that was very interesting to see unfold. Um, but yeah, the, the betrayal felt great. The b- base invasion was it super felt great. well done. I, I mean, like, sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I like, know, I like know what you the, mean. the way <laughs> it was executed felt great. Like, I was like, damn, oh, that, yeah. that sucks. No, exactly but that's right. so good, you know? So yeah. um, And actually, I, I felt... You know, I, I know you did as well. We actually like felt something from that. You know, how great is that? Yeah, I didn't get to feel anything throughout Mandalorian season three. So it was nice <laughs> to feel something different here. Like actually feel something yeah. for real, for real. Yeah. No, yeah. What, what an awesome moment. Uh, yeah, but that all leads us to, you know, uh, the pl- us as the player, I think we've done something wrong because it sends you onto this screen to say respawn as if you've just died. I thought, yeah. I swear I dominated that boss battle. I'm playing on story mode. Surely I'm not that bad at the game. No. But no, we respawn as Seer in, in one of the coolest moments of the game. I, th- I thought this was great because also Seer was like so OP. Like, she was, she she was, was tapping into that dark side energy, man. She oh, was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, getting to play as Seer was was awesome and such a, such a nice um, change of pace just th- throughout the game. And uh, yeah, just uh, the, the game the the game developers just aren't afraid to make bold moves which is awesome and and that what what makes the game so great and the storytelling so compelling um but yeah we do get to play this here but it all leads up to uh ah the men self walking in and take, taking taking the life away from us so yeah what a moment how, how did that all go down for you oh sorry i lost it for a second see her dying just yeah, everything playing Seer, battling Darth Vader, and then eventually yeah. losing it. The, 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 Seer taking out gunships and and hordes of stormtroopers was insane. Definitely OP, but I think I think that's great. I think she was definitely tapping into her dark side abilities there, um, and or what, or just using the adrenaline. I don't know, but it was just great um, to be Seer, and I just felt like I was a Jedi in the Clone Wars with that blue lightsaber. It's like very unique character design running around like it was just so cool anyways the vader fight i did not i was genuinely mouth drop when vader came storming in the yeah. jedi temple were you were you taken aback yeah I, I was i was about to say i thought it was a vision for a second because i just thought no way we see vader this this game no or that early either i was like yeah yeah, yeah. you know i i didn't play the game i didn't know how i was gonna go but i'm like it feels still too early for the conclusion so for Vader to yeah. pop in and that was his only appearance, that was great. 
that yeah. was such great. a good use of the character as well. And they had a exactly, and it wasn't like a cameo or like a like yeah. they, they fought before, and so this was like yeah. like they the way they were pitching to us that the Anakin or Vader fight with Obi Wan was the rematch of the century. No, this was the rematch <laughs> of the century. This was <laughs> yeah, insane. Like we got that cool Rebels nod where like. She brings the bookshelves on Vader, and and then he, you think he's dead, just like how Kane and Ezra dropped the walkers on him, and he just yeah. comes out of it, like just raging with anger. That yeah. was so well done. Yeah. This you can tell me and Mike are complete a complete rebels nerds because I had the exact same thought. Oh really? Yeah, that's the that was all moment. Yeah, amazing stuff, like mind melting. Yeah. It was just great. Not even that it was Darth Vader, but because of it made sense with Seer's story. They had fought yeah. before. He said she would have made a great Inquisitor. And she was like, I have nothing to fear. I'm over that crap, you know? And and she defeated him. I mean, she like was near close and and then he just kind of, you know, then killed her or whatever. But which was very sad. I was, I genuinely, I genuinely. And I, I didn't even know I was that attached to Seer, but I guess just playing Fallen Order so many times and, and hearing about her story and uh, just a lot of the character beats for me have, have just been emotional that I literally cried, like genuine, like couple tears when she died. I was like, oh, that was sad. Yeah. Sad yeah. AF. Um, and Absolutely. That was, that was just got wrenching. And when Cal went, after her and then just seeing her body under a tarp i was like oh mm. so sad so or i should say a blanket but so sad um yeah. th that whole moment was like a like 10 out of 10 dude 10 out of 10 they yeah. they nailed this like kudos like we we sit here and, and we yell and and we scream at when people don't we, we don't <laughs> yeah. do that that's an exaggeration but we get mad when people don't do stuff right but this is literally a moment that it's like they nailed it. They could have not done this any better. Like it's just this yeah. whole game, really. No complaints yeah. from me. literally zero complaints from me. I love this game. I'm with this you. experience. Yeah. And also, I think it, it really did the character of Sia Justice to get that moment where you actually get to play as her for a second before she does die. Yes. Exactly. Um, and I love that this is skipping ahead, but I love throughout the rest of the story. Um, you know, specifically as we're going into Tanalore, Sia sort of plays that Obi Wan role to Cal. Um, which I thought was uh, amazing. And then, uh, I mean, yeah, I I'm skipping way ahead, but we'll talk about the final scene in a bit. But that was just utterly beautiful. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. Sia, Sia really played, like, Sia really played her role well in this game in the sense that um, I feel like a lot of the time story writers, they'll they'll kill a, a character to try and get a response. But it's best when, like, a character dies for a purpose. And the best example of that is Kanan in Rebels you, because that is, uh, like, you know, the imagery and that and everything is... Um, it's not it's subtle without being too subtle anyway but uh this is a, another great example of that seer really had a good purpose to die for in the sense of how we're going to see the characters move forward because this is going to affect cal and progress his character in super interesting ways and make the story go forward. because i assume we're getting a third game um actually we'll talk about that later but are we getting a third game i don't know anyways but uh yeah seer uh that was great and then the moments right after her death as well, I thought were great on the Manta sort of with just Marin, um, Grease and Cal sort of like scrambling, like what just happened? What are we doing? Like, um, and then they do go to an Imperial base in a very interesting sort of part of the game where uh, we, we, we got some sort of Andor vibes in there where we find out Bode, yeah, as you mentioned earlier, has sort of a bargain with uh, a member of the ISB if, if Bode gets him, uh, you know, relevant information then he'll kind of hide Bode's identity and let him hide out in that base with his daughter of course and keep them safe and we have some really confronting scenes with Cal and and the daughter and then Cal says like you're a monster to Bode's face in front of the daughter in in a in a very intense scene and, and Cal keeps tapping into the dark side like that, that's not a complaint but one thing that I'm sort of like huh like what's with that because he kept tapping into it and then by the end of the story at least I felt um, just wait until someone completely rules me out on this and says there's a good reason for it. But I was like, what was the payoff for him constantly tapping into the dark side? Was it trying to parallel something with Seer? Like, oh, I'm not too sure. Or just throwing out there that, yeah, it is an everyday struggle to to stay in the light. Uh, but yeah, what did you think, Mike, of this whole uh, Imperial base scene and then and then 
the eventual chase of of Bo to Tanalor. Listen, Dravis didn't scare me one bit. I'm like, let's fight this mofo. I'm I'm ready for it. But when we were on this base, I was so scared because I'm like, if I have to fight an Inquisitor, I am literally gonna crap my pants. Like I was just, it didn't matter who. I'm just like waiting because they're like, oh, the arrival of the Inquisitorius has legitimized our operations, and I'm like, oh my god, do not tell me that I gotta fight the Grand Inquisitor. I was ready for it, but but you know, I was like, because I wanted to see him and and Jason Isaacs back. I wanted, I wanted that moment. I'm like, when do we get to see the Grand Inquisitor? Because the the Inquisitors were on the base, uh, so I was very interested to, and very, very eager to fight <laughs> the Grand Inquisitor. But that's not the way it went down. Um, it, and obviously, I and I, I like that. It was the focus was more grounded with, with Bode. Um, but the entire base sequence was very cool. And then, and then uh, finding out that this is his name Dravis that this Dravis guy um was is his name Dravis the ISB guy yeah I forget his name we'll ca- we'll call him um we'll call him <laughs> Leo we'll call, we'll call him let's Leo. call him office chair uh, sure yeah office <laughs> oh my goodness very okay we'll call him office chair uh <laughs> sorry that's an inside joke this moron uh yes love that this office chair yeah just ignore that <laughs> office chair leo um no i th- I, th- I thought the revelation that he's the one that sent bode into into saw Guerra's group was that was shocking uh, a bit i mean if you read inferno squad you know that the isb has done has done that a couple times but but yeah. they did so with the inferno squad group with Aiden. And a couple of the other members. Did you know Infernal Squad used to be four members and not three? Read Infernal Squad, the book. Very good prequel. Very good prequel novel. Better than Battle Scars. Um, <laughs> better tie-in novel. But but anyway, so the, I got vibes from that that I was like, oh, that's cool. They, I, I think they might have picked up on that, that the ISB did that. But, what, I mean, I thought Cal killed him when he bashed his head to the desk. I thought that's what had happened. But when he stole his uniform... How did he get a new uniform? I guess he went into his closet. Because didn't Cal steal his uniform? Oh, right. Yeah, true. <laughs> and then he comes out. He must have, I'm sure he has a few laying around. Yeah. He, I mean, he, as if he yeah. wears the same uniform every day. Come on, yeah, you, no, you're right. You're right. I apologize. <laughs> uh, office chair Leo. Um, but then, you yeah. know, that whole sequence happens with, with Cal walking in and the daughter being there. I'm like, this is Obi-Wan and, and Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones when Jango mm, Fett the, yeah. is not the one that answers the door. I'm like, oh yeah. man, this is insane. But even I love the when nothing was cooler walking around as an ISB agent with Cal and and like just yeah. fitting. And I'm like, whoa, these perch yeah. I would say, like, as as a fellow redhead, him walking around in that in that ISB outfit with his red hair made him stand out yes. so much. That was insane, <laughs> and yes. it was making me laugh a lot. Yeah, I did love that a lot because I'm like, uh, actually, yeah, a couple times I did think of you just because it was Cal is a redhead. Um, but but there was a shout moment where my fellow changes. <laughs> shout out you guys. Um, very, very few, but lots of you out there at the same time. I don't know. Um, I have I actually Great have red hair. I sure. I, I mean, yes, I do. Next time. Right. Next time I'll pull Explain. one out and I'll show you. Anyways. Explain. Um, <laughs> oh, you're just gonna say you have that. Right, fair enough. Yeah, so I'm part redhead. I don't now know. Now we're talking about red hair. <laughs> Dude, I mean, it it was it was a big theme of the game. But when Obi Obi Wan, uh, when Cal enters before he enters, like some part of the base as an ISB agent, he he has to go through this scanner, which they have in uh in the Obi Wan series on Fortress Inquisitorius. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. And I was like, I oh, that's that. that's mm-hmm. kind of cool. Um, so that that's also cool. I just love seeing the enter interconnectivity with all this stuff um but yeah, yeah we saw that and and yeah i thought the ex- heated exchange um like ari and i did here with tales of the jedi but this time between <laughs> bone and cat was super super yeah. intense and and absolutely yeah. loved that and and again i i think i mean with the dark side stuff i mean who wouldn't get angry at, especially at the level that cal did who wouldn't be angry that it's like not only did Bo just kill um, 
get his master killed and and get Enor Cordova killed. But now he's just like he when Cal finds out that the that he led him to that base so they could all kill so he could kill them and they could end up killing Cal because all the Inquisitors were gonna be there. That was insane. Yeah. Like that was another twist that you're like, damn. So um once again, this game is just superb. That whole moment was great. Um, for me, my favorite part was literally walking around uh, as an ISB agent with Cal. Like that was just great. Um, and even the dark side moments were pretty tense, especially when he was breaking through those locks on those doors and just ripping the doors apart. I'm like, this is scarier than Vader on in, in Fallen what Order. You, yeah, yeah. What, what did you think of of him doing that and and almost it not getting paid off or or just it, it sort of felt like Ezra in in season two of Rebels and season three. I definitely think it the door is open for. Yeah something in the third game i don't know i th- i think the yeah. conclusion of the game kind of brought some things down but but it doesn't make sense because when you're done with the game you could still use the dark side stuff um yeah it's, it's weird so i think I, I think that's one of those things where it's just like it's a video game and you sort of have to get past it it's sort of just like they want it to be like oh cool you, now you can use the dark side like i get that i definitely don't think that's the case i think it's could be wrong but i definitely think it's because the the story is not over, the trilogy is not over. True, like, true. Yeah. It, it, this might be something for the future, you know. So, yeah. To me, no, fair enough. I honestly, in the in the pregame show that we did exclusive on YouTube, um, we, me and Aiden, we were theorizing what was going to happen, and I said, I think Cal is going to be turned into an Inquisitor. Did that come to fruition? Mm. Or I said, go dark side. Did that come to fruition? Not really. But I did see a lot of the stuff coming that that Cal was experiencing. So yeah. we'll see if it gets picked up in the next game. For sure. And and yeah, let's let's finish this off by talking about how it all ended. So the boat gets away to Tanalore and then something I uh, I don't know. It, it was fine, but just the way that it was sort of like, oh, boat got away. Oh, what are we gonna do? Oh, I just remembered in in the in the lady's message she, she said this and it was sort of like oh like oh yeah we kind of yeah, could have got there the whole time and there was like oh just align these things and then do this and that and then we're there so anyway yeah. that you sort of got to look look past that it's, it's whatever but we get to tantalor and it it looked awesome i'm excited to just jump back into the game and run around that planet um so yeah we get to tantalor we have a very intense fight, so final boss fight with Bode. Um, there's some very emotional moments with the do- when the daughter's like uh, t- looking at Marin and she says something like, "You're, you're so pretty." I just that that was that was funny. Mm-hmm. And Marin sort of just like doesn't know what to say. She's just like, "Okay." It reminded me of like uh, this is just something Guardians of the Galaxy rain, but it reminded me of like Gamora or something from those from those movies. But um, yeah, we we get there and then Bode's defeated and and three more. Uh, past Jedi died in in Sia, um, Bode and Cordova, and and we finished the game off by you know paying tribute to those characters in a really like beautiful final scene. Um, I know there's a post credit scene, but the the final scene before the credits, um, you know, Cal sort of with all those bodies and just looking and and reflecting and thinking, and then Sia coming and standing behind him as if like you know she's always got his back in a spiritual sense um i know there's a lot more depth to that than just that that was sort of how my initial reading of it um yeah i i really love the ending to this game i thought it was beautiful i i love when endings aren't um all in your face and they're sort of subtle and peaceful and like beautiful like that so really a, a great ending to a great game but how did you, how did you go with the the final few scenes and, and a bit of action uh, the fighting bold was very cool learning that he was you know a jedi a, he was a jedi like it, it's just people we say like oh great like you know every time we learn a jedi survived order 66 it's like oh yay like another one like there was no one killed during order 66 but it's like yeah there was it's like if you think about it one percent of the jedi survived order 66 so that how many how many jedi were there uh in it how, what's the number like ten thousand jedi knights isn't that line somewhere? Yeah, um, ten thousand Jedi Knights. So what's one percent? What's one percent of that? Yeah, exactly. It's so like, uh, hundred. We're gonna is that or is? 
I think. It, I'm yeah, so, yeah, I don't 100. know. So, um, uh, also going to get roasted. <laughs> yeah, we do not do math around here, but um, yeah. but yeah, so it's like we're gonna see thousands. I mean, like literally hundreds of Jedi that survived the purge just because um, it just makes strategic sense. But Bo being one of them and, and having like this, it sucked because I felt for Bo, but he just wasn't seeing the larger picture. Um, he was just in the mindset of a, a survivor, you know? And it's like, damn, like you are not seeing the bigger picture. So that was frustrating. And it was also frustrating how many times Cal was willing to see if he would change his mind. I'm like, no, just, just he's not going to change. He already killed so many people and betrayed you so many times. Like, come yeah. on now. But yeah, but Bo... All in all, he was he was a great character. I love yeah, I love the companionship indeed. that that he brought um, to the to the game. It was cool to see Cal have a buddy and someone to confide in. Well, at least we thought. But um, yeah, I, I thought the the ending sequence was was very cool. I mean, um, fighting. I don't. I felt like the fighting the bosses was a lot easier this time. But maybe because they made story mode yeah. easier um, than than Fallen Order. So I'm. I want to next time I play the game. Won't be for ages, but I'll try to see if I can play on um, on Jedi Knight mode and see what the difference is. But but yeah. very very good stuff. And the ending there with Cal was it, he kind of looked at that red lightsaber a little bit interestingly. Um, yeah, that was, it's like the final shot panned down onto it. I mean, just thinking of this now, but that that could uh, I think that actually is a, a teaser to the third game because it was it was Bode's lightsaber. Um, and, if I'm remembering co- correctly, so that could be teasing, you know, a dark side in, a dark side turn for Cal in the third game. You never know. I mean, yeah. I he I don't I don't think he survives any of, of the these events of the Jedi series. Um, I think he he dies eventually. He has to before a New Hope or not. Or yeah. like, what were you doing while Luke was out there finding the Empire? Like he just didn't care. No, the purgle have taken one Jedi away. They're not taking another one. Yeah, exactly. And and you know this kind of I love Return of the Jedi. It's my it's like my favorite Star Wars movie. Uh, but but it's just so funny, like all the seriousness that that's taken with the Empire and all these approaches, and then just to think the Empire comes crumbling down to a bunch of Ewoks and stuff. Like it's just so yeah. funny to think about. Um, but you know, um, but anyways, with with the ending story here, I thought it was so touching with. With Seer and Cal was like a final goodbye. It was kind of like a a Kane and Jarus moment to Ezra, mm. um, and, and also Hera when Kanan says kind of when Kanan's there over her shoulder at one point yeah, um, yeah. in the uh, what what's the what are those episodes called the two Shroud of and a Door or something Yeah, two that one Yeah, that one yeah, And yeah. so, anyways, very touching ending. I fucking <laughs> cry. <laughs> Mike, oh, I am so sorry, everyone. Oh no, uh, it's just more work for us, but more work. Oh, well. I cried. Thank you. That is all. I'll stop that oh, before I speak man. more. I'm so sorry. Well, if, See, if we're going there, yeah, well, well I loved it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm already gonna have to edit stuff out oh. anyway. So. Jeez, <laughs> um, <laughs> you're gonna regret that. <laughs> uh all right well <laughs> i think i think that uh that gets the message across though on, on how we felt um yeah man my brain's a bit washy i need to get, get over this cold because we've got a big episode tomorrow we'll talk about in a sec but uh before we wrap up the fallen order of uh, the, the survivor conversation what i just say brain's a bit washy um fog yeah foggy <laughs> uh so third game question mark and your rating Third game, definitely gain a third game. I don't see how they don't. Um, by the way, if you haven't had, if you if you just decided to watch a review, haven't played the game, or you want to buy it soon, Amazon is having a ten dollars off sale, which I'm kind of mad mm. about because I'm like, damn it, but it's whatever. <laughs> you can order the game on Xbox, PS5 for ten dollars cheaper right now on Amazon. I'm sure I'll be on the lookout for on May fourth as well. It might be a good deal. Yeah, maybe. Um, no, we're definitely getting a next game. I love that this is like the Jedi series. Like they've so established that here with Survivor. So next game might turn dark, but I there's for me. I definitely think there will be a confirmed third game. However, I would so love it if they just did a full saga of these games. I would rather. I think less is more 
but I just want to keep playing in the sandbox with these characters. I just think that this, like, Fallen Order was such a, like, nice self-contained story that if we didn't get a follow-up, it's like, okay, cool, like, we could read about their adventures in a comic or something or a novel. I think this is fine. But this story just elevated the playing field where we're in the High Republic pool, the Saul Guerrero pool, Rogue One pool. We're just the Obi-Wan pool. We're in, we're touching base with everything Star Wars, High Republic. We're touching base with everything Star Wars. Um, and I think that the next game, I think it's it's just the perfect setup from what they left off and, and what Cal still has to do. And I they just have to have one. And I know if we get one, I mean, what was the 2019? So 2021, 22, 20, three, three, four years, four years um, since yeah. the last game about. And the pandemic was in between that. So. It, right. So I'm like, that. so how much longer till? To the next time we wouldn't probably see it see it till like 2027 or something 2028 yeah. well will it still be on ps5 probably not um <laughs> it'll probably be for the ps6 so um yeah. yeah but i definitely think there's going to be another game and rating for this game 9.5 out of 10 i it's yeah. i i don't know how it just can't be um or at sure. least in the nine in the nine range how about yeah. you though do you so you yeah. think there's going to be a second game yeah, what do you I would want love... from the second game yeah, I would love to just cap this off as a trilogy. I love when Star Wars works in trilogies and I'd love it to just be the Jedi trilogy and the final game is the is the conclusion to the story. I think that would be great. Do I think we'll get it? Yes, absolutely, I do. The, these games are, are a huge success for Lucasfilm and uh, the fans love them. So I, I think a third game, uh, you, you can you can definitely bet on that happening. Rating, I already put it on Instagram, but 9 out of 10. It's, it's a, yeah, I obviously everyone does their rating different differently but a nine is is fantastic score for me so absolutely love jedi survivor i hope you guys enjoyed our conversation today uh i know it was a long one but there was just so much to, to go over so you know we had to go over the mark a little bit um a few housekeeping things tomorrow is may the 4th so of course we'll be doing a may 4th special it also happens to be the 100th episode of the podcast so we'll be doing a small celebration may 4th special uh, so make sure you tune into that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Keen to sit down with Mike tomorrow to to record that. Um, but yeah, uh, until until then, you can find us at the SW Exchange on Instagram. Please make sure you give us a five star rating if you're an audio listener. Even if you're a YouTube listener, go on Spotify, hit five star rating. It takes two seconds. We appreciate it a lot. If you enjoy the show, even round review. If you enjoy it that much, we'd appreciate that. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Hit the like button. Let leave a comment. How did you enjoy Jedi Survivor? We'd love to hear it. Let's keep this conversation rolling for a few weeks because we don't want Survivor to just fade into um, into irrelevance. Because we want to keep the conversation going on around this game for a while. And of course, uh, Mike, where can the people find you? You guys can find me all underscore Star Wars. Make sure to follow that Instagram page. Um, and and uh, yeah, like just as Ari said, keep up the conversations with Jedi Survivor because. We're not going anywhere. We're not going to stop talking about it. There's still so many things to talk. And we may not have a select podcast for it, but we'll, we'll definitely keep talking about it as, as time goes on. For because sure. it's just yeah. that that special and important and big. And, and it it just deserves all the love. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, once again for listening. We'll see you all tomorrow for, for May 4th, episode 100. Looking forward to that. Until then, may the force be with you. Adios. Right.